Hello, friends. It's V Capaldi back again for another conversation that I think is super important because it actually shares what I believe to be a number one tool in living a passion, purpose driven life. You know, I come from a lens of a lot of experience, and I want to explain this experience to you because I think it's a very unique perspective. When I was, uh, for any of you that don't remember, I lived with four autoimmune diseases and by the age of 37 was legally disabled from the effects of multiple sclerosis on my body, which resulted in bilateral loss of my hands. I had no feeling on the left side of my body. I couldn't move my head left, right, or look up or down. I couldn't drive. I had full-time help, people living with me, <clears throat> and my life was pretty much unmanageable. Following Western medicine and traditional healthcare, I eventually pretty much bankrupted myself, was facing institutionalization, hospitalization, or suicide. When my back was up against the wall, wall and I could no longer take prescription medicines and do all the things that Western medicine had told me, I was faced with this decision. And that decision was to own my life and to change my narrative. And once I no longer fell victim to MS and changed my narrative, I was able to manage every symptom and reverse most of the outcomes on my body using only diet and lifestyle. I do this all by myself and I manage all of these diseases through my choices, through my narrative. Now in 2016, I decided to launch the award-winning Taking It to the Streets tour. This was a free or donation-based tour where anyone in America who needed help in any level, all they had to do was reach out and ask me to come and visit, and I would share with them whatever tools in my bag of tricks were gonna aid in living their best life. So I did this, and what makes it very unique in my lens is that I lived in the homes of Americans for years, inside their homes for days, learning about their needs and how to best offer them tools to manage any obstacle in their way. What I can tell you is that when I started the tour, I really believed that I was going to be teaching people mostly about diet and lifestyle. I believed that diet, which was the last piece of my miracle journey, was the key to my success. In actuality, yes, it is one part of the puzzle, but it's not the key. I met many people along the way that were eating a diet that was biohacked for optimization of their body, of their biology, yet they weren't getting outcomes supporting their dreams, desires, and passions. Time after time, I kept saying this, and I kept wondering, what? What am I doing wrong? What is it? And then I realized my lens as to the work that I was going to do and the way that I was going to help people the most was not correct because what people were struggling with was the narrative. Most of the people that I visited weren't living with chronic disease. There were issues from all over, mental, physical, psychological, spiritual, just people lacking connection in some way. And sure, I could go into my bag of tricks and pull out tools and say, do this, do that. But that's no different than when you injure something and you go to your physical therapist, they give you a bunch of exercises and you never do them. Now, I'm not trying to call people out, but most PTs have shared with me in my decades in physical therapy that I'm a rare breed that actually does the exercises. So we all know that it's really hard to self-motivate to do something just because you're broken. Most of the times when you go to a PT, it's because something isn't working optimally and you need help. That narrative does not produce anything positive for most of us because it's a narrative of something's broken, I need to fix it. So when I was touring around America and helping our most in need and people that requested me to come, the conversations they were having with themselves is what fuels every possible passion, purpose-driven life outcome imaginable. If you're doing things because you feel like there's an imperfection, there's a default, there's something not normal that needs to be fixed, that narrative doesn't bring us to the place we want to be. And I'm here to tell you because I've done it myself. Science has shared many times 
the outcomes of a good narrative. What is the narrative? The conversation you're having with yourself. And I did a TEDx talking about culture. Culture, our culture delivers a narrative that most of us absorb and follow through an autopilot existence. Society delivers so many narratives that again, most of us absorb and follow without any real conscious thought. You're probably saying like, what are you talking about? I'll tell you that I was raised culturally Italian. And I just thought that every Sunday families got together and had dinner at noon and spent the whole day together because that was all I knew. That's a cultural narrative, a societal narrative. A societal narrative is we eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And if we eat a food that's chosen for breakfast for dinner, we call it breakfast for dinner. That's a narrative. That's a societal narrative. These are things that I'm talking about. And you're probably thinking, what well, does it matter if I eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner? And what does it matter if I have dinner on Sunday with my entire family in, in my narrative? Well, my TEDx talks about, well, Sunday dinners in Italian families include all kinds of foods that I can't eat. So yeah, my narrative, it makes a difference because I was faced with go there, eat the stuff and feel like crap or change the narrative and offer myself the opportunity to go to these and not feel left out and not feel deprived and have a narrative of a power stance and self empowerment. My TEDx talks about that and gives you the tips on how to do that. So we don't have to talk about that here. You can go to that, it's called cultural collision. Societal narratives, the breakfast, lunch and dinner narrative. I just shared that with you. Another narrative we all agree to is eat pizza, get heartburn, don't worry, just take tongues and it'll get rid of the heartburn. That's a narrative we all subscribe to. When you are looking at narratives, cultural and societal ones are easy to figure out. But there's also, meaning that's where they're coming from. But there's also narratives that are just narratives that happen as a result of living life. Events, situations. So where narratives like, Cultural narratives for me were I had to adjust the way I was eating certain foods because I couldn't eat my culturally relevant foods anymore. That's a narrative of consciousness I had to change. A societal narrative was breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I eat two meals a day. I had to realize that optimally for my body and my narrative, that wasn't going to work for me, three meals a day. And then what happens to the narrative that's just based on life and living? The narrative that you hear as your person in society, your being in this energy space. A lot of those narratives don't always work out or don't always leave you in a place where you like the outcome. If you have an unsettling narrative, and quite honestly, who doesn't? What are unsettling narratives? Situations that have played over and over in your mind. Maybe it was a confrontation. Maybe it was a good conversation with someone. Maybe it was a job, the way you interacted with someone. Maybe it was with a friend, a loved one, a lover, a confidant. Anything that happens in your life that results in a thought process, it's like, God, I wish I would have handled that differently. Oh. That was really not a good look. I cannot believe this just happened to me. And these could be negative or positive things. The narrative that you're telling yourself is what matters. And when it comes to, it's easier to rectify cultural, societal, because you can identify those fairly easy and you can prepare for those. But when it's real life stuff happening, how do you solve that? Because if you're holding on to that wah, wah, wah that says, I wish I would have done it this way. I didn't like that. This did not serve me. That was painful. How do you have a narrative around events like that that does not stand in the way and in fact becomes a power stance? I'll tell you right now. It's one of my greatest tools. I learned it in my grad school program. I've perfected it. I've studied it. I've shared it with many people. It's not easy, but I can tell you, you take that real life story, that real situation, 
and you turn it into fiction. Meaning you now take that story and you play it through. You write it out. You look at it. You have a conversation with yourself. You play chess mentally. Turning that situation, whatever that real life situation is, into the desired outcome you have. You mentally go through that process. You write it down like a story. The story that it is, but now you make it your story. This little act, and it's not little because it's not easy to do. It sounds easy. But when you actually sit down to write, we all think we know what we want until we get there. And then because you really have to ask yourself, when you write that true story and you create it into a piece of fiction with the outcome you want, you now have a power stance and you have the power to change that narrative. And it's not always as simple as just doing something different. But I can promise you that going through this exercise, when you have that piece of fiction based on real life, you will now have a power stance emotionally, spiritually, and that unfinished, unsettled business that has been playing like a broken record in your mind will stop. No longer skipping, it will stop. Sounds easy, not so easy. A lot of times it brings us to a place where we really have to have hard conversations with ourselves. A lot of time we look at this process and we get stuck on the fact that we realize that maybe the narrative that we wanted isn't optimal are not that easy. Or we learn the real role we have in the narrative and the real power we have to change based on our biohacking, what's best for us. And when we can start identifying all the narratives that influence us and create the space to marry who we are with the narratives that influence us, that's when you start living a pa passion, purpose, and dream-filled life. Because you're no, it's, it's by constructing your own narrative in all aspects of life is your business plan, your roadmap to living your best life. Autopilot, there's no space for living your best life because it becomes a repetition. It becomes unconscious. Autopilot is unconscious. A conscious narrative is what is needed for optimum living, for miracle life, for passion, purpose, and dreams fulfilled. Yes, diet and lifestyle choices matter, but none of them are gonna be achievable to produce optimization if the narrative that you're starting from is wrong. Again, most people don't do their PT exercises because they're told to do them only because they're in physical therapy most often time because something is broken or not working optimally. If that's the reason that you're asked to do something, it's not a power stance. I have tons more information on the narrative on my blog. At, that's www.paleobosslady.com. You can just type in narrative and all the blogs will come up. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Paleo Boss Lady, where I talk about the narrative a lot. If you reach out, I answer all questions. And I hope this video really helps. I direct you to my TEDx Cultural Collision that really talks about cultural narratives and you can just put in the word societal narratives and it would offer this the same tips would work for that i believe in you i wish you the opportunity and i hope that you'll give yourself the opportunity to have a narrative of a power stance a conscious dialogue between you and your choices recognizing honoring and respecting the narratives that are in place and marrying who you are with those narratives for optimum living. 
And if there are narrators in real life whose outcomes have not been ideal, you do have the power to change that. This is not easy work, but it's the most powerful. Namaste, my friends. And I believe in you. And I trust you to always live optimally. Take good care.